Okay, so what do we need to do? Let's have a look. So, okay, we can, I guess, let's uh, turn off auto update. There's a couple of things we can delete. Let's maybe go to a full screen. So here we have this switch that we used for sort of visualizing our different build types. I guess we can get rid of that and just use our rebuild thing here. Maybe, maybe start naming our stuff. So rebuild volume. Uh, what's this thing again? Yeah, I guess we can get rid of that one. Okay. This does our velocity, so I guess let's have a look through our thing. I guess we could make a, let's just organize our network a little bit. Create vel. Let's put, so we can remove this one. Let's make a box here, call this, attributes from volume just nicely cleaned up a little bit i don't i i didn't do this in my main scene for now maybe i, I will do uh include that in the download um probably clean that up before you can download it so let's do the that thing let's make this call this uh rebuild volume like that all right so now we need to do a switch here somewhere which will allow us to switch between these points and our points so let's put this one in here because this will be included in that part uh, let's uh, i guess make our view smaller again so we don't need it to be as big All right, and what we're gonna do is maybe do a switch. So we have these points here. Uh, let's go back a little bit to put it to auto. So these are the points that we use up until frame 50, right? Because from frame 50 and onwards, it will be this simulation. And what I generally also like to do is on my file caches, uh, go to load from file and turn report error into no geometry because um, if it report error for example if you run a simulation in it and you and it encounters an error of like some kind like this one like if it can't find geo then the entire thing will just stop uh, so with no geometry it will just continue running that's a lot of time what you what you want i guess like in, in this case we don't care I mean, we just wanted to pick up no geometry maybe from the beginning. Um, anyway, so let's do a switch over here. And maybe we want to move this upward a little bit. If you hold shift, by the way, uh, and you can drag, you can see then you can drag everything above it upwards. If you hold control, it's does the other way around. So now we can sort of expand this upwards. So have some more room and we can include our switch over there. Let's move this about a little bit. All right, and now let's plug our rebuild flip, or not our rebuild flip, our flip simulation into here. And then let's say that dollar F, so the frame after frame 49. So now this should, so this will eventually Evaluate to the first input over here, and from 48, it will still be there, it'll still be there, and then for on frame 50, boop, it will jump over to our flip. We will have a continuous effect. So something like that. And then what we could do is down here, I guess we can create an output. And then let's have a look over here. So this will rebuild now. We'll start rebuilding our volume. Gorgeous. 
begin a while. Right. I guess we can uh, let's make a file cache down here. Let's call this for you rebuild. Let's do frame one until frame 175. Let's see if we have anything here that we might want to throw away. I mean, this is everything we need, right? We have density, heat, temperature, and all of the velocity. We could, I guess, compress this as well. We can have a we can have a look if that makes much of a difference. Because this is going to be our final cache. So let's just com copy and paste these uh, these things here. So we already set that up. Let's put them down here. Have a look. Doesn't really seem to do that much. I guess that's also because we were already using the 16-bit floats, so it doesn't really matter that much in this case, because it was already rebuild rebuilding from the 16-bit floats. I guess maybe we could Turn some stuff down. See if it actually makes much of a difference. Um, let's see if we select some stuff. So I don't think we're gonna really. Oh, I think. Oh, okay, yeah. It's pretty obvious, but this, of course, this doesn't work. With, we're not working on the VDB here, so sorry for that. This is uh, it's blue, so it's a regular volume. So if we convert VDB, so volume to VDB. Uh, oh no, so sorry, from VDB to volume, all the way around. So you can see now they're green. So blue, green. Uh, you can see this is already smaller in this case. Uh, you'd you'd think VDB would be. Uh, smaller because they're sparse, but there's also some situations like this where just having it as a regular volume will be smaller. And now we could put this compress over here. And you can see right now we can get it all the way back to 40 megabytes. Drag this in here, see if we still have some proper velocities. And you can see it still works quite well. Uh, we need to plug that in, of course. Um, so essentially, we went from 136 megabytes here over here for this thing to something that looks exactly the same, 40 megabytes. So that's a 100 megabyte difference. So you can really see uh, how important optimization can be. And if, you, if you're gonna look through my actual production scene, there's a lot of stuff that I, I didn't do as optimized. It's because generally when you're just like working and playing around, what I generally do when I make these personal projects that I then put in tutorial form, uh, often my actual production scenes are a lot less organized and cleaned up than my tutorial scenes. It's because when you're just playing around and trying out stuff, you're just dumping notes in uh, and well, and then eventually you end up with something that works and looks good. And then you might you might optimize it somewhat to get it through the render, uh, but you're still oftentimes going back and forth and back and forth. Uh, and then eventually you'll end up with something that already rendered. So by that time, I mean, sometimes you go through the setup to clean it up, sometimes not. Like if you have an effect that you're gonna roll out over multiple shots, of course, it makes a lot of sense to like, like make one uh, base scene that's super organized and clean. And then you can roll it out easily over other shots, but sometimes I don't do that. And then I start when I when I do put them in tutorial format, I generally do clean them up uh, before I upload them. Um, but when we're building this as a tutorial, it will be quite more organized. Anyway, so let's uh, cache this out, I guess. So from frame one to one seventy five. Uh, and let's press save to disk and then I'll report back when it's done. Oh, so one thing uh, that I forgot to do, uh, which kind of broke 
when I tried caching it. Of course, this rebuild volume here uh, is linked to this thing and this cache stops after a certain frame. So what we need to do is like this box thing should connect to our switch down here. So this box will also switch with the cache that it's loading. So just putting it out there now, I will rebuild the cache from frame 50 and onwards. So just so you know, let's press start. Oh, something you might notice, uh, I'm caching this, is that it, this takes quite a long time, even for such a low resolution simulation, because remember, we're dealing with quite a lot of points, uh, quite a lot of voxels, uh, the, the VDB will end up quite big. So, I mean, this is now, uh, it's only done a couple of frames, and it's already five minutes. I think for my final sim, this ended up running for about four hours. So keep in mind that the, this rebuilding process is gonna take quite a while, but if you configure that all properly, uh, even with a higher res resolution sim, it should probably all go through fine. Uh, it might eat up quite a lot of, of uh, system memory as well. So if you don't have a lot of system memory, this might be a little bit heavy or not work at all. So it depends on what you have. I have 64 gigabytes of RAM and I could cache uh, the thing fine for my production scene. But if you were gonna do even higher resolution simulations, then you might run into trouble. Um, that's also why, for example, the explosion in the final shot maybe does not have as much detail as for example you would you would see if you do a uh, just just only a pyro simulation where you could really add a ton of detail and get a really high resolution pyro explosion which you would also upscale and and like uh, uh well press uh that's because i just had to i had to go through this process so i could have gotten more detail in there the thing is this was already like the entire thing from PyroSim, FlipSim, Rebuild was now all in all, I think about 12, 13 hours-ish. So quite long. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if I increase the resolution by, I guess, 50% uh, more then it would have easily been 30, 30 plus hours to go over the whole thing and I mean, eventually you also just kind of want uh, to have a result. And I kind of like, I mean, the result was looking good. Uh, I didn't want to go through another like one week process of like doing sims overnight and see how it turned out. So that's why I ended up with the cache and the simulation that I currently have, which is a medium rest simulation. Uh, but I think it, it still looks quite good, even though it's not the highest resolution pyro sim. So anyway, just wanted to ramble a little bit about that, that part of the process uh, while this is running. So anyway, so I'm going to stop the recording again, and then we'll report back when this is finished caching.